brother Isaiah uh, heard about heard about this story, and and he just had a great insight into it. He said he just like the blindfold thing really moved him spiritually, and he said in the spiritual life, oftentimes the lights go out, oftentimes that it's dark and you don't know where you're going, right? And we spend a significant amount of energy and time and effort trying to put, turn the lights back on. And he's like, brothers, just put a blindfold on. Just put a blindfold on and let the father take care of you. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, and just like, just, he's like, go darker, go deeper, bro. Just, it's, it, that's it, bro. Just put a blindfold on. So then you can, in the spiritual life, spiritually as a son, it just changes everything. Stop spending a lot of useless energy trying to control and turn the lights back on because it makes you feel better. Father's got you. Mm-hmm. He loves you. He's going to provide for everything. Just put your hand right here. Put your foot right here, right? And I just love that. He's like, just put a blindfold on and just and just go for a ride. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, I'm Father Mark Murray. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Father Innocent. Hey, I'm Father PT. And I'm Jacob Ramkers. What's up, Jacob? Hey. How's it going, Father? Good. So Jacob is with us. Jacob is one of our core missionaries who was with us in the desert. And um, yeah, before we get into things, Jacob, just real quick, who you are, core, what, what, that, what that's about, why people should listen to you. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> my name is Jacob, and uh, I'm... I guess I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and what is CORE? So uh, I, I'm a missionary for CORE Expeditions. CORE stands for Catholic Outdoor Renewal. And uh, it's it's kind of a, a program that, that was born out of Wyoming Catholic College. Uh, so just, you know, a little bit of background on what we do. Because um, your father and not talk about the desert. Um, basically, you'll and you'll meet David on the next episode, but... Uh, we just just do these trips year round. Uh, trips like the one that we're talking about. Like this is our charism. This is what we're dedicated to. Um, and we're we're in the desert. We're in the snow. We're in the mountains. And we're just here to to get people to Christ and and get the gospel to Christ through the wilderness. So uh, scripture comes alive. And uh, this is the bread and butter. Like mm-hmm. identity. This is this is it uh, for me and and David here. So. We're stoked. That's all yeah, for sure. What do you got, Father Innocent? All I got is we talked about you guys coming out to do. Well, you, we've been talking about you guys visiting for a long time. Mm-hmm. So when I saw you, when you guys showed up, it just brings me a lot of joy to have you guys here as our brothers. And and it's one thing I was thinking. <clears throat> it's one thing for you guys to to enter our life as we're all kind of in the desert. You get it. You guys get a sneak peek into our life as as passions come and we form them and we're helping the guys go deeper. And so you, you guys are like a part of the, the family, right? But then to come here and visit, it's just good to, it's just so good to have you guys here in our life. We joke that this is New York City is a different type of desert. Some might call it a jungle, you know? So you guys are coming from Wyoming Catholic, the mountains of Wyoming, and, and to have you guys here is awesome. We, we talked about early on, Father Mark Mary, in the second, no, I guess my third trip, your first, that we knew this, this the Linton podcast was going to be on the desert. As last year, we, we kind of alluded to some stuff as well. And they were like, I think what, what happened was Father Mark Mary was like really moved, impressed by you guys. They're like, hey, do you think like these guys could come out to like, f- you could come out and be a part of the podcast. And so it really excited me because it's really, you guys are such a source of the going deeper, the invitation. You guys hold us in and, and keep us focused on what, why we're here, right? And so to have you guys a part of this journey and, and to give some insight and perspective on, on why would anybody want to go do this and what happens on the outside, what happens on the inside. Right, so it just makes a lot of sense to me that you guys mm-hmm. are kind of like the co-captains here as we're inviting people deeper. So it's pretty awesome. Thanks, I'm proud. I'm such a proud brother. <laughs> and the right, so we are. We're this is um, second Wednesday of Lent, which we're I guess calling the first week of Lent. Yep. I guess liturgically, it's considered the first week of Lent. And and so we wanted so right, Father Innocent in formation. He's he's there with the guys, been in formation for a number of years. Jacob kind of. Basically, full time. This is your job is is being with men and women in the desert, forming them. I had a chance to experience it a little bit, just so I like Not a little bit, bro. You were there a little bit one time. One time, you keep throwing it in my face. <laughs> wow, Somebody's you know, it's like, oh, third time. Yeah, you didn't, see, it's he, there's more coming <laughs> later on. And then Father PT's here for contractual 
<laughs> legal reasons. Uh, for those of you, thanks for watching. If you want to, uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco a poco. That's very helpful. And as always, uh, we'd recommend you subscribe to get the new episode straight to you. Um, what do we want to talk about real quick? Yeah, so I'm just going to give a little encouragement for our brothers and sisters who are walking on this journey with us. We are in the desert with Jesus. We are following Jesus. We're with him. And he is, he is our teacher. He is our guide this land. We're, we're going all in for with Jesus, right? We're not getting distracted. And, um, and so that's just, again, last episode, we just, we just really went all in for the gift of Jesus and what he gives to us in the desert, the gift of our identity, the gift of the Father's voice that blesses us and the gift of who we are, right? And we're gonna fight this land to be in that place, to stay in that place with him. Uh, just some practicals encouragement for that come straight from the book is that this doesn't happen if you don't pray, right? The desert without prayer is actually torture probably. Um, it, we have to pray. And so I ask guys just simply to commit at least 20 to 30 minutes of silent prayer a day using this book as your guide, but also the scriptures. And, and I hope that's, that's really clear. This growth and, and this, this, yeah, receiving the gift of our identity doesn't happen if we're not, we're not in prayer. We're not in that place of intimacy with God. So we have to go all in for prayer, make time, right? Um, we, we do violence to our schedules because God wants to give us this. Also, we, we know that a big part of Lent is fasting and, and sacrifice and penance, right? Those are kind of scary words and it all, it, those can mean different things to people, but we're just gonna stay really focused. And I think some good things to just focus in is food, focus on our food, technology, and busyness. Food, there should be something that you're denying yourself from. Those are, those are easy things, right? You can be the chocolate, it can be the chocolate or, you know, intermittent fasting, skip breakfast, have a couple, you know, like whatever it is, you're denying yourself that, that hunger, the pat, like that's a real concrete, simple way to understand. Like we hunger for food and we do a lot of funny things when we get hungry. Mm. And so we just want to say, Hey, listen, when our body kind of wakes up to that, Hey, no, no, no. Like I'm in charge. You're like the hunger is, is not challenge, not panic, challenge, not panic. So don't, you're not starving yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a good, really good point. It's, it's just entering into small offerings and, and, and penances with our food that can really just help us be uncomfortable, help us experience experience the um, the growth there. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I can just one thing there, because I think generally, right, uh, if it's more than like a type of food, if it's kind of a larger fast, definitely I'd bounce it off at least one other person. Yeah, it's awesome. Ideally a, like a priest you trust. Because I have like, you know, somebody who's like doing this bread and water fast and then their friend comes in like, are you sure that's a good idea? It's just good for us to, particularly in the area of food, to just be particularly prudent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else on that? No, nothing. I don't want to take away from the conversation. No, that's good though. What are you going to say? Have you ever had experiences with maybe fasting too hard or anything happening to you? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. <laughs> when I passed out? <laughs> yeah. That wasn't because of fasting too hard. No, it wasn't, a, wasn't it a Friday and you didn't eat anything? It was in the morning. Yeah. It was morning mass. Oh, okay. It was morning mass. It was like 8.05 <laughs> 8 in the he morning. He was fasting all the way till 8.05 no, no, in the morning. No, 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 no. I was at, when <laughs> oh, we lived sorry. together at Our Lady of the Angels during the Our Father, I passed out. While trying to leave the chapel. It yeah. was just one time. It There's, only happened. I, I got were, fine. I was you, fine. It's okay, bro. You can, yeah. were you the doctor in, didn't say Were anything. you like just water? water I don't know what digging, happened. Digging I just deep, passed just, out. I was probably ecstasy. Was it? But like, <laughs> I felt like, anyway. All right. I wasn't you. even there, but please continue. Okay. So food. It's important, but <laughs> let's, let's be. Let's you get be, food in your teeth. <laughs> let's be. Uh, sure, you. Bro. <laughs> let's be focused. Let's be prudent. Right. So it's good to communicate. But food's a thing. It's good. And then. So also the, the technology, right? We have to create space. So technology is a really concrete thing we can do to, to yeah, just create the silence and create the distance from the world, right? If, you, if you're constantly connected to social media, that's, that it just invades you and you get distracted, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna fast from some sort of technology. Yeah, be prudent, but, but it's real. And I think, it, and I, when we take guys to the desert, they don't have phones and stuff, but it's so, it's pretty incredible just to be kind of all in, no screens. And, and the, the space that creates is, is pretty awesome. And we're going to fast from busyness, right? We have to take, we have to take, we have to slow down, right? We have to, again, create space. We need to prioritize time. We have to, like, why does every minute of every single day just need to be busy and full with stuff? Like, take a deep breath, create some space, right? It might create a space for a friendship or brotherhood. It might create a space for just reading a spiritual book. What, whatever you're going to do, we just need to slow down. 
right? So a part of the penance can can just be this this entering into or just trying to create some space instead of being super busy all the time. And then the last thing, brothers, is brotherhood, right? We No one goes into the desert alone. Like Jacob, maybe Jacob would, but <laughs> like we always talk about the, the, the experience of going in the desert, a big, a big part of that, which we'll talk about next week is, is the rally that, yes, I go with Jesus. And this means that my relationship with Jesus means something for me personally. But the, the beautiful thing about our CFR desert experience is it's, it's, you don't do it alone. You do it with your brothers, right? And that's, that's big for us. So I invite guys to, to, to read through this book and pray through this work, book with a brotherhood, with whether it's two or three guys or five or 10 guys, right? And the, our lady friends, right? Like we want to do this together. And, and that's kind of built into the book that you're not, you're not in isolation. You're not stuck in yourself, but, but, you, but you're in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And ladies, thanks, thanks for sticking with us. If you recall, <laughs> Advent 2020, we did the Blessed Is She Women's devotional. It worked for guys too. This one's the guy one. Um, it's going to work for you It's going to work for everybody. <laughs> Father Pierre Toussaint in particular is going to make sure the feminine genius is <laughs> reverenced. And, uh, I mean, I will share. Right now? Not right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, sure. For sure. I'll, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah ladies, good. I got you back. But what I, what I think you just communicated <laughs> under everything you're saying is like what we're ho- like what Born of Fire and what this podcast is meant to be in general is, is not just like uh, some more information some more talk. Like we're really wanting to go on a journey together. We really want like uh, you not just to listen, but to actually make substantial changes to your life to really enter into this, this season of Lent. Like for you to receive the richness and the fullness of all that the Lord wants to speak and to do, there, it does it does require some of our own participation. In it. Yeah, and Jesus got to do it for you. And I, I have confidence that he's going to do it, right? We are setting you up for success, hopefully with, with the book, with this podcast, there's going to be a lot of accompaniment but I, we have just a deep desire for you to encounter Jesus mm-hmm. and he's going to do it for you, right? This relationship of intimacy, it's real for you. Yeah. Those, and what is it? Those who sow sparingly are going to reap sparingly yeah. and those who the opposite of sparingly sow are going <laughs> to receive the opposite. What is the, what's the, what, what, is it just the negative? What's the positive? Those who sow abundantly, abundantly that, will reap, reap abundantly. abundantly. Oh, sparingly, sparingly and abundantly. Yeah. I don't. Is that the scripture? I don't know, but my my you translation is that it works if you work. Stop it. Stop touching me. <laughs> I talked about this last episode. Uh, <laughs> it works if you work it. Mm-hmm. Yes, it works. It works if you work it. <laughs> I don't know. Cast out into the deep, whatever. But for real, let's go for it. <laughs> so, what are we talking about today? All right, we are. Don't. I wasn't going to touch you. <laughs> I was making. I just wanted to make fun of you. I was okay. back. All right, brothers and sisters, we are diving right into the first identity, which is the absolute most important identity. This week can stand by itself in a sense that it's the foundational identity of that that the Father gives us, mm-hmm. right? And and we are again planting ourselves in the gift of Jesus's baptism, and what how He invites us to to again in, in baptism we are clothed with Christ, right? Saint Paul says we. It's no longer I who I, I who live, but Christ lives in me, and that's the gift of baptism. We we enter this new relationship, right? And so we in we enter the desert with with Jesus to be. We enter the desert with Jesus to receive from the Father this this new bestowal of the gift of who we are as His sons and daughters, right? And this is the foundational identity we have from our baptism. This is the identity as sons and daughters that everything else builds upon. Because again, I'm going to just say this, and, I'll, and I'm going to open it up. Because when, we, when I say that I'm a son or I receive my sonship, it automatically assumes or puts me in a relationship with another person. You can just be like, hi, hey, I'm son. Well, okay, that's interesting. Like, no, son means that I have a father. Son by, by nature means that, that I have a father, right? And I have a father who sees me and loves me and gives me life. He is the origin and source and, and center of my life, right? Jesus goes in, in, and he plants us deeply in this reality that we are sons and daughters. And that is the, the truest thing about our lives. I actually, it was funny in the writing of this book, I, and it was taken out because it's more of like a, a speaking thing when preaching that you kind of have these artistic phrases. But I say that again, when we follow Jesus in the desert and we're with him, united to him, we hear the voice of the father say, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Guys, this is the truth about everything for us. This is the truth, our sonship, our belovedness, in the Father, with the Father, is the truth about everything, right? So this is the starting place. We go into the desert and, and, and we receive our sonship from, from a Father who is real, who sees us. It, it's a real relationship. 
No, it's just the the fire once again. It's uh, <laughs> you're so cliche. Uh, no, but like it, it's beautiful just sharing because once again, that's where like it's the point of departure. Like it has to be once again a relationship. And even too, like we got this in ecclesiology with Doctor Hoon Hout member, and like he closes his eyes and he says these things. But that's the first time I I actually heard that that once again that language of Son, Father, Holy Spirit. It's a language of relationship. Um, and so this is real, in particular as sons, like we can acknowledge the fact that we have a father. Felmer Mary kind of stole my thunder um, a bunch of podcasts ago. I used one of his stories. Have yeah. you used any of my stories in any never, places? Never, never. <laughs> I probably you have. You stoop so low. Um, I've told your stories wrong. Um, but it's something, I'm just gonna tell stories specifically of my dad when I was in Little League. And uh, anyway, so Williamsport, Little league game, 12 years old. And it's a meaningless at bat in the sense of it's 10 nothing where our team's up. And I just three, two fastball, I crush it just over the fence, 250 feet. And yeah. And so once again, yeah. it makes it 11 nothing, meaningless. <laughs> I'm rounding second base and in the stands there behind third base, behind the fence are the parents of our, our, of our team. And at the top, I see my dad just hands up in the air like this, slapping high fives. And I could hear him with this Haitian accent. That's my son. That's my son. And like slapping high fives. And like, once again, I mean, maybe I didn't process it at the time, but I go back to that often, like in prayer, once again, just realizing that's how the father rejoices in me as his son. Mm -hmm. You know, like he slaps high fives. He just has this moment of excitement and joy. Like if I'm able to stay in this place of the desert, and look to him for the identity. Like, Father, talk to me Come again on, about say that. it again. Say, say it again. again. <laughs> like, That's my son, you know? Um, I remember even, too, being at Corazon Puro and just talking to a, a father, just having had a daughter. And all he could do was talk about his newborn girl. Like, man, Kayla's so beautiful. Like, even when I hold her, like, I can't even sleep at night. And it's just all he could do was talk about, like, but how are you doing? How are you getting with sleep? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't get that much sleep because Kayla. And he go back to Kayla mm -hmm. and keep talking about Kayla. It was always about Kayla. And- and that's once again, like the father's heart for, for his daughters is like, this is, this is who you are. You're mine. You're totally mine. And we can live from that place of daughtership or sonship because it's real. It's foundational. And from there, we can experience the things that we need to experience as, as his. How old were you when you hit the home run? 10. 10. And yeah. so, and that, that, I think, and it's still like, you remember it, right? Yeah. Cause that was, it was last episode, I believe brother Colby talked about how like when the father speaks a word to you in your heart, like it never mm -hmm. leaves. Yeah. And sorry, it's a vivid, it's a vivid memory. And oftentimes in prayer, I could go back to it and there's just more, there's more there, you know, like, yeah. and so. Mm. And again, that's, that's the invitation. I think it's, it's to experience that and uh, allow the father to speak that word into our hearts again in a way which uh, leaps a kind of a, an impression, which doesn't, yeah, never fades. What do you got, Jacob? Yeah. I'm just thinking about the, um, just that, that natural relationship and, and how, how that relates to our heavenly father. Um, I, I mean, growing up, I, I always just thought of like our, our creator, our father as, as an idea or, you know, cause he's, he's not somebody we can see and we, and we can't have a relationship with an idea. Like that's been consistent for me over the past few months of like, you know, I, I can't, um, an idea doesn't rejoice in me. Mm. Um, I can't, I can't awesome. receive that, you know? And, uh, I, so, um, it reminds me of our, like the very beginning of our trip, the desert trip this year. Um, it was pretty unprompted, but, uh, we, you know, we got to our campsite, we're sitting around the campfire debrief or, uh, talking about, um, just the trip and, and getting people prepped. And it just came to me and I asked the question to the guys, like, cause you know, you normally go around the circle and it's like, all right, what's your name? Where are you from? And like fun fact about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, what's your name? Where are you from? And what is an, an attribute or a trait that you love about your father, mm -hmm. like your earthly father? And it was like that reality check of like, whoa, I mean, there, like, there's some real hurt there. There's some real, some real, like, um, you know, being loved there. There's, there's a ton of emotion. There's a mm -hmm. ton of like humanness. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I think the, the Lord really encounters us there. Um, yeah, I got another story. I don't know if I can, I should share it now or just kind of wait, but let's, let's go. Do um, it. so, so, uh, the, 
I just remembered the situation um, that happened. Oh, it must have been six or seven years ago. But um, you know, a little bit of background. So, so I come from a big, pretty big family, um, and a beautiful pa- family too. Uh, a lot of siblings. I got eight siblings, and my little sister Anna, uh, little siblings Anna and Joseph are adopted out of the foster care system. And I just remembered this situation where uh, Anna, she's just beautiful. Um, so she was in the in the system from like six months old, and and I remember like our family received her, and all of her stuff was in a trash bag, and um, mm-hmm. and my mom, like she has such a big heart, you know. My my parents are just so generous, and so they're they're with us for a while, and uh, finally after like you know, five years, we adopted them into our family. And I remember my mom telling me a story about little Anna. Um, she's like seven years old at this point, like barely in first grade. And she walks into my dad's office and she's really adamant. She sees my dad like working on paying bills, writing checks or whatever, you know, uh, working on the computer. And she's like, dad, can I, can I help you with the bills and i think she even like brought a little bit of money and was mm-hmm. like, can i help pay the bills and you can like you're imagining like how ludicrous this is my dad's <laughs> just like what no dude like you're not even in second grade <laughs> and um and it just made me think like you know she is an adopted daughter and like where did that self-sufficiency come from like at seven years old it's innocent it's not like a sin it's just a reaction to like I need to earn my keep. Like I need to defend this and I need to mm-hmm. earn my, my place at the table. And, um, yeah. So I, I for me, that's, that's the place to start is mm-hmm. like, what is my self-sufficiency a reaction to? Mm-hmm. Bro, that's, mm-hmm. I love that. And I, I think just, she, she's, I mean, so be such a beautiful story. She, Again, it teaches us about our own hearts. How do I what, what how do I come before as a son or daughter? How do how do I start this Lent or this again uh, this time of prayer? How do how do I start with the Father? What kind of relationship am I am am I in? Do I have to prove myself? Do I have the self sufficiency? Do I have to do I have to do it? Like what do I have to do? How do I have to perform for the Father? Mm-hmm. Right? But we're <clears throat> we're we're sons and daughters of God, right? And the gift of the gift of just re- letting just ourselves be be little and loved and po- and just and just seen and cared for, right? Um, I, I it's a beautiful mm-hmm. starting place. Uh, one of the each week through Born of Fire, there's a part where we go to the baptismal rite itself, right? Because the understanding is first and foremost that again, this this is all an identity experience about being reminded of the dignity of who we are. Um, we already are this person. We are we are son. We are daughter. We just need to be reminded of it or to, to learn it deeper. And also there's a part where this is was designed for Lent and the understanding is like, if you will, the Lent ends at the Easter vigil or whatever. We're, go, we're going to the Easter vigil. And right in the center of that, of course, is this, re, is this renewal of our baptismal promises. Like, do you reject Satan? Do you reject all of uh, his lies. empty promises or his lies, all that sort of stuff, right? And this is one of the lies of Satan that the Lord wants to um, wants to help us reject this Lenten journey is like, do you think, like, do you think you're a burden? Uh, do you think you have to earn your keep? Do you think mm. you have to like pull your weight around here or, or I'm going to be frustrated with you or, or whatever it is. And I do think that part of the freedom of being sons and daughters is um, some, I forgot who it was, but just some, I think it's a priest, somebody like that, just like to have the freedom of like the little like boy or girl who like just like immediately just like jumps on her dad's lap or something like that. Like no mm-hmm. questions asked. I'm just going to go ahead and make, put my, like make, make myself at home. And I think, and that's the way the father wants us to know that we can act about him. Like we're just, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to like not make a mess. You don't have to keep it down. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. no, just, just you, just do, you do you and I'm going to rejoice in it. Mm-hmm. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. In a non rep. What's that word? Uh, where you can do whatever you want in a sense. He's been struggling with words. Today. <laughs> <laughs> relativism. Yeah. We're not talking about relativism. Yeah. But, definitely not. Yeah. But nonetheless, the Lord's going to love us even yeah. if we are mm-hmm. stupid faces. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think what, what is, what you're shining light on is a father's heart of unconditional love. Mm-hmm. I don't think that word, I mean, people, yeah. Unconditional love is, is super difficult to find in this world. When we talk about our humanity, right? I love how Jacob said that 
it just, we learn about fatherhood from our, from our, our fathers and our, and, and the real people, right? Fathers and mothers are icons of the father. And sometimes that goes well. And sometimes that doesn't, right? They're at least they're meant to be, be glimpses into who, who, who the father is. Right. Mm -hmm. But as sons and daughters, oftentimes we, we find it really difficult just to let ourselves be loved. We talk about just receiving this line. We just want to receive, mm -hmm. right? But this is, this is the gift. It's the unconditional love of our father in heaven. Right. And I just want to say this. Yes. I'm, we were, we don't have a ton of time to, to go deep into, to our wounds, right. Where we are affected by, by mothers and fathers who, who are broken and, and haven't loved us in the ways that they should have. Right. Okay. That's fine. We are wounded, but Jesus wants to remind us of this Lent that we have a father in, in heaven who loves us unconditionally. That is, that's not up for discussion that we, we don't have to like figure it out or try, try to like just kind of crawl up the mountain to receive this or look at even ourselves like, oh, but I'm wounded and my dad, and my mom. Okay, fine. You have a father who loves you. And what's that mean for you right now as a son and a daughter? And brothers, that's what I, as we, even as we kind of go through this Lenten journey as, as different identities are focused on every, every week, I think this first part is so good just to talk about what does it mean for the father to be the father and for us to be sons. And it's just receiving the unconditional love. What does it mean for a son to absolutely you, you trust in your father? Can, can we, can we have, be a son and daughter who trust? Like my father is good. Mm -hmm. My father's going to give me every, like, every, like brother Colby, everything I have is yours. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, again, just that's the lie is that, again, we talked about this a long time ago. Like the, the, the lie of the garden is the enemy tries to convince Adam and Eve or Adam particularly that the father's not good and he's going to hold out on you. But, but the restoration that Jesus comes to bring is the father is absolutely good. He's absolutely attentive. He hears you. I say in the book, like he loves to hear your voice. He loves to look at you. He loves to forgive you everything, provide everything for you. And this is the unconditional way that he loves you and gives himself. But can we trust in that? Can we let go of all the, all the other lies and, and bring, us to, bring us to that place? I don't know if anybody else, I mean, I said receiving, I said trust, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. what, what, what other things that are part of his experience as a son, like that's a part of the posture? I think also too, the father has unconditional hope for us too, where like he constantly sees the best part of things that we don't see. So going back to the woundedness, but even more so, um, like he has, like to your story, um, right? He has a vision. Your father has a vision for Anna. Like, okay, I hope that she does these things. And not to say that she's attached to that or she has to do those things for him to love her. But like, there's this like dreams and aspirations and hopes. Like she basically wants her to be the best person she could be, you know, like to succeed in life. And she doesn't have to earn these things because she's a daughter, because we're sons. Like, that's it. Like we have it all. And, um, and just to highlight receiving, I don't have any new things to add, but no, uh, just receiving it's for me, like the model of receiving, especially in this posture of, of we could say sonship or daughtership here is our lady. Right. Cause like, I think a difficulty with guys is receiving, you know, like we, we go out there, we do things. Um, it's kind of like my thing recently, but Home Depot has this, whatever this phrase where doers get more done, you know, like that's okay. Yeah. I want to get more done. You know, I'm just going to go out and do it or whatever it is. But specifically in our relationship with the Lord as sons, especially here in the desert, like things are stripped away. And so we just have to be in this posture of reception and who better to look at than our lady and her heart and how she just receives everything from the Lord. And she gives it back to him freely, you know, let it be done to me according to your word, listen to him, you know, you know, do whatever he tells you, um, you know, and the Magnificat, it's just, once again, this posture I've received so much and I'm thankful for that. And I'm going to give it back to him in this real way. And so if we struggle with that as guys, I think it's a real thing to say, because once again, Mary has this unique relationship where she's obviously the mother of the son of God, but she's also a daughter of the father, you know, and the spouse of the Holy Spirit who are, okay, mom, teach me how to receive better, you know, or just walk with me in this reception because I, I struggle with it as a man mm -hmm. or, you know, like, or mom, just like help me to be a better woman in receiving, you know, like whatever it is, wherever you find yourself in, in struggling to receive what the father is saying to your heart speak to her about it because she's done it perfectly and mm. she does it well and she desires to walk with us in a real way. But once again, it's this place of reception as sons and as daughters that we can listen to what the father's saying to us. And once again, we don't have to earn it because we're his and yeah. we're a son, not because we've done things or we're a daughter, not because we've earned it, but because we're his. Yeah. And just sit there. 
Yeah, and you, you talked about being doers, right? It's the mm-hmm. dependence. Right. Can, sons are dependent. Sons are little, sons are small, right? right? And and this is my, like, look at my dad. This mm-hmm. is my dad, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think that dependence is also like, I just looked on here, dependence is also another way to say that. Like right. in the desert, we're dependent. Right. And we trust, right? right? And, and it, we're poor. But that's what sons rejoice because my father's coming. Like, my mm-hmm. father's coming, right? right? I, one of the, the images that comes to mind is, so my dad is like the boss at his law firm. And so I'm sure for a lot of people, he was like Mr. Ames and there's like a, a thing around that. But for me, he was like, dad, I had no idea, right? And mm-hmm. I used to, uh, I used to, I worked at the office for a little bit and I always could just like, he had a, like a, like a mini, what's it called? Mini fridge? Mini fridge. Yeah. He had a mini fridge. Just like you have with Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. I got, I got a full, full, you got full fridge, mini fridge and and microwave, microwave in your cell. Microwave. Bro. But I, I would always just like, if the door was closed, I'd still be respectful. You know, he's like, but I, if, you know, I could always just go in and just like grab a Diet Coke. Like what was his was mine. And like, you know what I mean? And, and that is some of, I think the, the freedom of the sons of God, it, it is part of it. Because what I want us to to particularly respond to with maybe some of the desert stories is like this isn't this like weird sentimental passivism, right? Like this, this actually this this actually um, speaks well into like authentic masculinity and manly manliness. But being a son, being a son does mean that we can be weak. Being a son does mean that we don't have to earn our keep. Being a son does mean all of this sort of stuff. Son of being a son means that when we can go to the father, we can go to the father with absolute confidence. Um, but also there's a security in the battle and there's a confidence in the battle. Like David, who's like, I'm going to go into this battle because it's not I who fight, but the father who fights with me. And that's what it, that's again, this is like what the sonship looks like. Right. Being a, being a son is the most, I think it's, it's, it's so difficult, but it's the most important reality of our lives. Yeah. And, and I do think that we have, like, there is this, all of us, even even us who've been doing it for a while, it's just so much part of our culture. This thing about like not being, not being a burden or not mm-hmm. being uh, dependent on another, and like wanting to be self sufficient to some degree for a lot of us. Like it's just it's just there, and so uh, we really do have to. I think we have to work through that in a way which is, is authentic and real and authentically masculine or feminine when it applies, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is not in any of our cases. <laughs> so I think some of the desert stories really highlight this. And, yeah. and I th- this is, this is probably the most clear thing when we invite guys to the desert that they're, they're going in with Jesus to, to just go to this place of, of receiving everything from the father. Can and this be a time for the disclaimer? The CFR core trip is different than other. Oh core yeah. Trip. That's Let's, a good time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Jake, go for it. All right. Disclaimer. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Father, you said, uh, the CFR trip is the most intense trip that we do at Core Expeditions. Uh, but As it mostly, should be. mostly it's because of Father Innocent. <laughs> and, and, I love that. yeah. Come on. <laughs> so, so when, yeah. uh, well, when Tom came to Father Innocent, well, Father Innocent came to Tom, you know, he's, ex- Tom's explaining, like, well, yeah, we do trips like a week or, or we do a 10 day trip. Longest trip we do is three weeks, and Father Innocent immediately he's like, "Yeah, yeah that's, do we'll it. do that one." And he's always like, "Yeah, let's just do the hardest thing. Like when you got an option, why don't we just, you know, do the do the whatever it is at night?" And yeah, I, I like told Carl that I'm like, I don't care what we do. I just the hardest thing we can do. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome because um, I, I think it's in the invitation for these young men. Totally. Yeah, but but for we, the sake of understanding what core is and your yeah, mission, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we we do abide by like industry stra- industry standards for risk management and and try and stay within that and but, you guys uh, are trained yeah totally like totally. trained paramedics trained guides and everything we do yeah and awesome so because but, but we are gonna because and that's important because we are going to share stories about our trip but parts of it are unique and mm-hmm. there is a part of this type of uh, forum to make it interesting you do sort of highlight some of the more intense things that happen you, you, unusual um, but that there are, there are just different versions of this trip. Totally. And I will say that that's kind of the beauty of these conversations and sharing the stories and, and, um, just kind of conveying this trip to, to the listeners is that, um, look, all, you know, all, um, industry standards aside, like this is a dangerous place. Like it's a dangerous place in prayer. Like we have to encounter challenge. And and challenge requires risk. And are we gonna are we gonna worship safety? Are we gonna worship risk? And so it's something that we are willing to take on. 
in order to reach that that mm-hmm. higher yeah totally reality yeah. but I'm all were, about were it. you part of when father innocent was trying to cut out the kayaking canoeing oh man <laughs> oh they were part of that father innocent is there's a there is this intense father innocent that is intense and we're not going canoeing. I like Suffering. guys, nuns go canoeing. That's why it's like sisters. I think I saw the sisters of life canoeing down the down, down the river. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, but seriously, I mean, well, that that story's funny because I again, I'm all in favor of like the pushing and the intensity, and I think canoeing just sometimes can lack that. But then, as you as our listeners know, last year, yeah, um, we put a mine in in the in the river and it blew up and. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what you thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. And Jake comes up to me after, he's like, how about that, Father, huh? The, the, Lord, the Lord using the canoeing. And it, it was an amazing experience. But there was we're a, not going canoeing next year. There so. was a brother when he heard like the itinerary and then, or maybe just hearing about other brothers and their experience. Like, hey, did you guys go canoeing? And then my brother's like, no, nah, we didn't. It's like, whoa, that was the best part, you know? <laughs> but because it was, it was easy. I yeah. think, and the brother was expressing that, like, oh, that was, I got to just, you know, float chill down out. the river for yeah. like seven, eight miles. You don't want to chill know? out. <laughs> so. You don't want to chill out. Like we, in this year, what was awesome is that we, you, again, you just get one guy to stay focused and it's mm. difficult for guys because we kind of r- reduce or deduce to the lowest common denominator. So I remember we got into a van and we were, we were in transition to, to, uh, to um, canyoneering and the heat's on, a nice comfortable mm. seat and guys, mm. everyone, everyone fell asleep. And I'm, I'm like, this is it, Lord. This is why I don't like this, right? Guys are getting, guys are getting comfortable. Get up. Don't go to sleep. <laughs> there was like, the there was transition days the year before, like where you had a little down day. You yeah, had a little nice this, this and that. Very few this year. Very few. The guys weren't even, because sometimes you're like, we're not all just in one spot all the time. Sometimes there's like a two hour drive from different spots. Mm-hmm. And like, because we're, we're not using bathrooms, mm-hmm. actual bathrooms. And so we're like, we're at the gas, gas station getting getting gas. And it's like, no, you can't. Like you can't go in and use. <laughs> like, you can't go in. No, dude. He, he, he kept it. We kept it. And I think. And again, this can be, this can be the transition of. You gotta yeah. hold it for twenty one days, like a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a man. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but there is an intensity. But we. It's 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 difficult, right? When we 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 have a propensity to be soft and and to take the easy way out, right? So we're trying to hold guys in this place. And, and I think this is what kind of quickens or it makes the experience potent, right? Because we want guys to, from day one to, to a strong finish 21 days later, we want them to be in this place of radical receptivity of who they are and their sonship, mm-hmm. right? And so we're stripping everything else away, every comfort you could try, you could think of Jolly Ranchers and nice bathrooms <laughs> um, to, to be able to receive, right? And it's amazing, Jake and Paul McMurray. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> but it's amazing if if we're faithful and we like give our yes. It's amazing how quick the Lord acts. Like he doesn't he doesn't waste time, right? And so I remember the first repel. This is like this is after backpacking. There was in, we'll tell stories about that. But but the first big repel, guys guys are most probably nervous about the repel. A lot of guys there's an intensity about repelling, you know, fifty to one hundred and twenty feet. Right, it's a lot, and especially if you're afraid of heights and you've never done it before. So this is a thing, right? And so uh, our brother Omar, he he was afraid, and so um, I I always go first most times because I like to be to go first to go. You got to kind of break the ice a little bit, but I do enjoy being at the bottom and watching everybody come down, and and kind of coaching them and 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 encouraging them. So it's a thing for me. So I go down first, and then everybody else comes down. And and this story with Omar just. Just I remembered how important the trust is in this posture of trust as son and father, because without the trust, nothing, nothing happens. There's no openness. And so I was down at the bottom, Omar's coming down and you could tell that he's just going very slow. Everything's very calculated and he was doing great, but I, I had to stop him and, and ask him to look down at me because there was a pool of water kind of, uh, kind of down to the right. And it was a pretty, I mean, people on another route were definitely in the water getting wet. And I just wanted to, to protect him from that. So I yelled up, I'm like, Omar, hey, stop, bro. Hey, stop, look at me real quick. And he stopped and he just like kind of froze and he was like, Father, I can't look, I can't look. I'm like, hey, Omar, just look at me real quick. I just want to help you through this next little little section. He's like, Father, I can't look down, I can't look down. And I said, Omar, hey, bro, you're fine. I just don't want you to get wet. And so I'm just gonna, if you look down at me, I'm just gonna show you where the water is and I'll tell you what to do. And there's this pause and he just had a beautiful line. He's like, Father, you're lucky I trust you. Mm. And then he, then he like looked over his right shoulder and he looked down at me and I said, Hey Omar, what's up, bro? And like, I tried to like break the ice a little bit. And I said, Hey, there's some water. Like as you keep going, you're going to, you're just going to go around the water. So you don't get, you don't get your, your legs wet. 
and you're going to stay to the left and you're going to just keep coming down. So he just, he looked at me and he just slowly kind of, kind of followed it down, missed the water. And, and so he, as he was going down, I, I kind of just looked at him and kind of was, it was a beautiful moment. And I kind of stopped talking. And then he was like, father, keep talking, father, keep talking, <laughs> keep talking as he, as he's like, as he's kind of finishing strong and he, and, he, and it's, it's scary. Right. Mm -hmm. And so those two moments of you're lucky, I trust you to the keep talking. I think as sons, we, we need this constant present of a father who's, who's secure, who loves us, who we, who we can trust. We know we're loved by, and that can just be, Hey bro, I'm here. Look, come on. Like I am here to protect you. Right. And so little by little, he can make his way down this repel. Right. And, and so it's just a good story to, to teach us about like the posture of a son. That it's not about not struggling. Mm -hmm. Just when you when you accept your identity as a son, and life doesn't become perfect, but you got to work at it, and you got to live in it, and you got to enter the challenge as a son, living in this identity. And things begin to change. Decisions you make begin to to take shape around your sonship. Is it easy? No. D did the next repel of like maybe I don't know, at least 15, 15 or ten or fifteen yeah. re repels. Like, did the next one get easier? Hopefully, but like, you still are like, all right. He still got scared. He's like, okay, like, but, but again, he had, the, he, he was growing in this understanding. Hey, it's okay. Follow innocence down there. I can trust him. I just go slow, you know? So I just thought it was a beautiful story. Like his, his, his posture as a son was just, it just taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to comment on that, that like his, his fear was what came first on that, that first repel. Like he's coming down and he has this like, reaction of fear this emotion and like immediately acts out of that and then like you said the second repel he's just like i trust this like yeah i've trusted it before i trust father innocent and we're gonna do this so i, I love that because we often we often first act out of fear and and if i can just use the kind of the the, the deeper reality of fear and and kind of brokenness and maybe independence is sometimes we act just out of being an orphan mm -hmm. Like we got to do it by ourselves. I got to figure this out. And oh my gosh, just get through this. And, and, and so we're just kind of frozen. He was just like, it was, it was funny how slow he was going. He was like fighting for every moment. And it was like in his little world, right? And we, it, it's kind of a good example of like an orphan. We act out of fear. We have to like, okay, like, and we're kind of stuck in ourselves. But when we can be sons, when the trust happens, the freedom happens, right? What you got? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> One of the, what, a, what, um, one of the just observations is that you've been doing it. This is your third time. Yeah. You still get scared up there. Yeah. It's no joke, <laughs> but it is, this is the part like, which is their part of the living in our identity as son and daughter does also allow us to do hard things. It, it gives us sort of the tools to do, including faith, including particularly this constantly asking, be asking for the Lord to continue to speak for us to continually hear his voice. But like when you stay in this, like what are the fruit of it is like you start doing cool stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're repelling, you're like, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, there, and there's like a number of those things that happen. What? I have something now. Okay. <laughs> Come on. You just threw me like- Look what a, time it is. Okay. Am amateur hour, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, okay, to be honest, perfectly honest, I wasn't expecting you to throw it to me back then. That's why I was like, ah, I don't have anything. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> but- Omar, right? Community. And like in the context of this with Lent and we have brothers who've gone before us, you know, we could look around and say, you know what? He respect, like he does well with like living sonship. Like what can I find out from him about like, hey, how do you hear the father's voice? Like what does the father sound like when he, when he talks to you? Like how, you know, so just encouragement is if we're struggling with this as brothers or as, as sons, maybe ask a brother, hey, how do you hear the father's voice? Yeah. You know? And once again, it's also too like, with Lent, we do it as a community, as a church, as we're journeying towards this, this Easter vigil, the new man, and to be born again in that way. Okay, realize that you're supported. You're supported by prayer, supported by these things. And so just to, once again, fall back on that reality, the community of saints, like there's people you're cheering. You're not alone. For, yeah, there's people cheering. Hey, you got this, bro. You got this, <laughs> you know? Like, and so sometimes the audible voice is a brother speaking, you know, like from his experience of the father. Like, hey, the father had me in the situation. He's going to have you. Trust him. Mm. It's okay. So, All right. Thank okay. you, Father no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, Abrasive. We got, we got about 10 minutes. We got to cook. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're cooking because I'm, I'm pitching the ball to David. Uh, to, well, we got to talk about blindfold. I know. Mm. I'm pitching the ball to Jake about blindfold. Let's, 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 let's run with it. Let's move. All right. Let's talk okay. to, so, so talk to us about the, the incredible blindfold experience of canyoneering. Here we go. So <laughs> actually, uh, it was funny. Uh, Father, I don't know if you remember this, but Father Mark Mary asked me, uh, we had one 
I don't know if I should mention him by name or not, but you don't have to. I won't. But one of the postulants, um, like day three of the trip, we just see him. He's like leading the group. He's really strong. And Father Mark Mary's like, how? Like you say that he's going to experience sonship. Like how's he going to do that? And I was like, Father, just wait. Like we're going to blindfold him in Leprechaun Canyons. <laughs> so, uh, so we get to Leprechaun Canyons. And these are like really tight slot canyons um, and, and like short little repels here and there. Um, but it like very foreign movement, right? And drops. Like, like your, big, yeah, big, big drops. drops. Can, I, can I just give, for those who don't know what it is, you can, we're, we're putting stuff of this on our Instagram, CFR underscore Francis, mm-hmm. if you want to see it. But also it's kind of like you're walking down, like you're going through like a, a canyon hallway. It's pretty tight together. And then you got to go from the third floor to the second floor and there's no stairs. Mm-hmm. And so you have to use kind of the sides to get down. That's kind of a little bit of slot canyons, kind of a narrow canyon hallway. Right? Yeah. 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 For those totally. who have no, no idea. And when you say repel, what do you mean? So like, so you have a harness, you have a helmet, okay. you have a repel device. Okay. And you clip into a rope and then you like, you lower yourself down the rope okay. with right. your repel device. Just born in Long Island, never really done the stuff. Oh, so yeah. yeah anyway. totally. Long Island, baby. <laughs> um, Please. We're talking, Jacob. Thank so you. yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we we did a day of canyoneering just so people can like get used to the actually we did a couple of days but they could get used to the movement of it the um you know putting like their feet on the wall and their back on the other and like shimming shimming along imagine uh like climbing up a a, a doorway right mm-hmm. like hands on one side um feet on the other and so but we get to the top of the canyon on the second day and we're like all right uh Everybody, like, in your cook groups of three. So we have three groups of three. And we handed out blindfolds to to one guy in each group. And we said, all right, one of the guys is going to put a blindfold on. Um, here are the rules. You're not allowed to, to uh, put up the blindfold unless we tell you to. The guys who are leading you, they're only allowed to talk to you. They can't touch you, right? They're not moving your feet. They're not allowed to touch. Um, they have to communicate with you. And... And you're just going to do it until we tell you to stop. <laughs> it's like, there's no, like, yeah. Awesome. yeah. So, so we start the, um, start the canyon, do our first rappel. They put the blindfolds on and these guys are being led through and it just looks from the outside. It looks insane, right? Like I'm looking at these dudes and I'm even a little bit worried. Like I'm telling <laughs> the guys, I'm like, guys, make sure that they're not going too high. Make sure that like. You know, you're, they're not going too fast. And of course, you know, they're, they're just walking at a snail's pace through these canyons. And, uh, and, and I didn't even want to do it, honestly. Um, but, but these guys like had an experience where there was nothing that they could see. There was nothing that they could do. And they just had to like enter into the darkness and, Mm -hmm. and enter into like the, the fear and just being led by their brothers. Um, yeah, it, it, it was, was it awesome. was amazing because again, like Jake said, like I each of us was following a group, or actually it was us through the friars, and you guys were front and back. But it, you know, when you're it's, you're kind of shimming or stimming over like ten feet, and, and you're in control, and you have your eyes on it, it's like, well, this is intense. But like you you get there. But when someone is absolutely blindfolded and absolutely helpless and dependent, and you have two guys that are just communicating. Like this guy has no idea that he's 10 feet off the ground mm-hmm. and that he, if he like slips and falls, you, you're like going straight down. Mm-hmm. Right. And it, so as a father, I'm like, oh my God, this is like, so little by little, they just like step by step, hand placement by hand placement. They did some pretty incredible movements and pretty incredible things. And <clears throat> all, all the while this, this, one of the guys was just, just to throw in what it's something like a, unlike some of the turns you're holding yourself up, like with your. It, a lot of times it was like they were doing what they call the butt scooch, right? Where you're like feet are on one side, your butt's on the other side of the wall. They were up, they were up on a turn for like 45 minutes. Yeah. And you're still, so you're, you're like in it for a while. Yeah. And again, 10 to 15 drop down. So if like, if you get weak, you're just, you're going straight. It's not 15. Come on. No, I mean, okay. At least 10. Yeah. Well, yeah. Five, 10 feet. Sure. And then, I mean, we got people underneath them and like. Yeah. I just remember one that just maybe my stress level because it was okay. intense. I was down holding my hand straight up, like making sure you didn't fall. My group, he, I did not get in there at all. I trusted them. You were all in their business. I, but it was silent. They didn't know it. Dead. Or at least the blind side. Sometimes guy. it wasn't silent. But guys, this is, this is what... <laughs> but it, it was real for us, right? And, and these guys... But it's incredible. And maybe you guys could comment. Is just what was their experience? That it, so you at the campfire during the day, we're talking to these guys 
over a couple period of, of a couple day period about their experience of being blindfolded. And I was floored just about the, the, the beautiful, insightful experiences they had of their own prayer life of, yeah, just like relating it to the gift of being a son of the father, the relating it to being just, just being challenged. And, and they're like, some of the guys are like, I've, I would just say at utter peace the whole time. And you're like, well, tell me about that. But he's like, well, I was just, I was just taken care of. I trusted the voice of my brothers, you know, in the front and the back. They, they just it's told me simple things. Put your hand here. Okay. Put your foot here. Okay. Like it was just super simple. And guys were just at peace the whole time. Right. Again, it's the dependence. It's the littleness. It's the, the posture and the, and, the, and the receptivity of a son. Right. I mean, it, it was just so powerful because I'm like, oh man, my heart longed for that. Like I want to live like that. Every single one of them, every single one of them, nine out of nine, like that was an awesome experience, super peaceful. I, like it was 100%. Oh yeah, that was great. That was awesome. I loved it. Every single one. Yeah. They asked to do it again. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Cool. Joseph, I remember Joseph having this really beautiful prayerful line as we were sharing and he he was like surprised by the the depth and kind of, it was like, man, you're a mystic. Um, it was just that he was talking about the his experience, but he he was commenting on just a profound thing of the spiritual life. And he said, he said something to the effect of, man, like once I just let go and just let myself be taken care of, like, well, he was like, no, when I, he said this, yeah. So when, I, when I'm in charge and I, I'm just, it's stressful because I, when I can see and I'm doing myself, like I was just nervous all the time. But once I was blindfolded, I let go and I just surrendered. And I just, I just like, okay, I'm just going to let myself be taken care of. And he's like, man, my prayer life would be so different. I just live like that. Mm -hmm. Let go of control. Just let yourself be take, taken care of. And he was, I mean, he still talks about that grace of just like, man, <clears throat> like that's the way the father wants to love me as a son. Yeah, I'll just take care of you, bro. And the, and, and the, and the peace that brought him was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's like radical surrender, surrender, radical trust, and then complete confidence. Like all of that has come together. It's just this beautiful peace, which is also like, you just do, for lack of a better word, you do cool stuff. Yeah, in totally. In the spiritual life. <laughs> yeah, totally. To end maybe just with this story, because I think it's, it's, it's beautiful. Brother, father, our brother, uh, brother Isaiah, uh, heard, about, heard about this story. And, and he just had a great insight into it. He said, he just like the blindfold thing really moved him spiritually. And he said in the spiritual life, oftentimes the lights go out. Oftentimes that it's dark and you don't know where you're going, Right. And we spend a significant amount of energy and time and effort trying to put, turn the lights back on. And he's like, brothers, just put a blindfold on. Just put a blindfold on and let the father take care of you. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, and just like, just, he's like, go darker, go deeper, bro. Just, it's, it, that's it, bro. Just put a blindfold on. So then you can, in the spiritual life, spiritually as a son, it just changes everything. Stop spending a lot of useless energy trying to control and turn the lights back on because it makes you feel better. Father's got you. Mm -hmm. He loves you. He's going to provide for everything. Just put your hand right here. Put your foot right here, right? And the, I just love that. He's like, just put a blindfold on and just, and just go for a ride. <laughs> it's awesome. One thing I want to, so two things, one kind of, rat, or one other insight into that and then one other observation. Still, after we'd heard nine out of nine guys say that was awesome, still looking at it, if you were to blindfold me and like, we're going to get started, I'm going to be nervous at first. Oh yeah. Right. There's something about it where I hear and I see the experience of them having like radical peace and it's just an incredible experience and a very deep experience, but still there's a part of it just like looking at it and seeing it's like, I, that's still intimidating to me. Um, and I do think that is something of the reality of, uh, of the saints of um, when you see men or women who are like, they're radically surrender, radically confident, radically trusting, uh, Sometimes like what they end up doing with that trust is like still a little scary. Um, but I do, but like we want to move into that. Like, like let's listen to the witnesses of the saints who have gone all in uh, on the Lord. I'm like, okay, well maybe like, and just ask for the grace to kind of lean into that a little bit. Um, is it okay if I make another separate yeah, thing? It. An interesting experience about being in the, in the desert in this context is like, this is, this is Father Innocent's sweet spot with the men in formation. Like this is what mm. you do as well as anybody in the world, right? One, one time you're talking to Seth and says like, it's ridiculous how good you are at your job, right? <laughs> I am not, that is not my sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I am not the best at the world at that. And so it's, it is this, there's a, a dynamic of it is like, 
when the guys want, like, I want Father Innocence time. I want this or that. And like, I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm part of the ensemble. I'm along for the journey. But, but right, I'm able to do that and go into that. Because I, I at the end of the day, like I do, it's not perfect, but I know who I am. Yeah. Right. And I know, okay, I don't always have to be the star of the show. I don't always have to be the guy everybody needs. I can be in a situation where somebody else is better than me, but because that doesn't define me. Right. Yeah, totally. And, but there is something like real about that, of being able to just be rooted in your identity. I think I, I bring it up because Father PT, like he came along for the ride with this. You know what I mean? It's like, we're all talking about the desert and our experience and making fun of you. But he's like, I don't care. I don't, <laughs> care, if, I don't care if thousands of people see me get made fun of. I know who I am. Yeah. You can't touch me. And I love that. Maybe we, that's where we'll just, we'll, we'll end with that, with that truth is that we are inviting our, our brothers and sisters into the desert because we, we, we all have a deep longing just to know who we are. Right. And once you know, and you've been given the gift of yourself, it's just like, all right, Lord, like I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Like this, the, again, it's the truth about everything, right? It's the absolute truth about everything. And, and it's, it's one, it, it just brings us a lot of joy. And maybe uh, just to give Jacob a last word, but it's a joy because you actually, we get to see that in these guys. We get to see their sonship, sonship just come alive. And you're like, man, that's it. That's why we're here is because this young man is receiving the gift of himself. He knows who he is. And the, and the, and the place of that confidence and trust. And you see glimpses and then we're back at the Friary now months later and you're like, man, that guy just, he's living different. Yeah. Well, and I think going along with that, the beauty of it and the beauty of the desert is like we, we talk about prayer and relationship with the Lord and it's, it's often like up in the clouds. But for these guys who are like stemming for 45 minutes around this big bend, it's, you know, it's a, it's a radically peaceful interior experience amidst like a, an objectively challenging reality. Yeah. Like it is so hard <laughs> yeah. and like, it's not soft. And, and so putting those two in conjunction is just like an integrated way mm -hmm. of living. Mm -hmm. um, it's real. Yeah, it's reality. It's real. That's, that's the journey is to encounter that ideas don't rejoice in me. <laughs> yeah. I, I love idea, that. Yeah, like I can't, I can't fall in I, love with an idea. Ideas like, don't love to hear my voice. Right. Um, we want to experience that. Uh, Father Pierre Toussaint, could you close us with prayer? Sure. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Lord God, we rejoice and give thanksgiving for the fact that you have called us sons. We pray that you would continually speak this word of truth into our hearts, into our lives, especially in those moments when we don't see your goodness, we don't feel your presence, we don't experience uh, that reality, but just to know with a depth of faith and depth of clarity that you're with us and you're calling us forward to take the next, next best step. We ask for a pouring, outpouring of the Holy Spirit into our lives and to bless this time of Lent that it could be fruitful. We can grow as sons. We can grow as beloved. We can grow as yours. We ask Our Lady once again to teach us receptivity, but even more so just to be a mother to us, to hold our hand in the difficult moments and to continue to journey towards you. Let me ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Spirit. amen. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'd appreciate you if you subscribed. <laughs> and uh, you can continue to support the podcast. Uh, there was there was talks of a seven digit sponsorship deal with Home Depot that was just about to get signed, and then Bob Pierre Toussaint <laughs> that just went got after their whole motto. <laughs> Done. So we're we're <laughs> needing some help. You can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco. Um, That's awesome. And. Uh, what else we got? That wasn't funny. You can still get the book. Funny. If you don't have the book, <laughs> it's was. okay. Get the book, uh, bornafirebook.com. Next week, we're going to talk talk about being brothers and sisters. Yep. And uh, again, the, the podcast is just to complement the book and things. So again, there's a lot a lot of st more stories and a lot more, um, yeah, theological content as you guys, as we go. And what's up um, to Bill? We have a listener named, named Bill who is a fueler down at the in Phoenix, the airport, who listens every Wednesday and sends a little picture of him while we're working. So, Sweet. That's awesome. Hope you're having a good morning there, Bill. <laughs> we'll see ya. God bless everybody. And uh, we'll talk more later. Bye, everybody. <laughs> see you later. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short, that all will be well And I know 